And this formula we actually quite rarely use because the spaces are so easy to use, but sometimes it's nice to have. But it is the permutation for the number of distinct objects taken R at a time. Is NPR over is, and this is on your formula sheet, N factorial over N minus R times R. So first we'll use our example to explain what does this mean to take N distinct objects R at a time. Eight students are competing in a race. How many ways can the students finish first, second, and third? Well, we can do this with spaces. You would have three decisions that need to be made. You have to find out how many choices there are for first place, how many choices there are for second place, and how many choices there are for third place. Right? This is on the page right after the page we were on. So we were on 698. And now we're on 699. And then how many choices would you have for first? Eight. Because anybody could come in first. And how many choices could come in second? And this is the same as you have eight total choices. You need the permutations when you take three of them at a time. And according to the formula, this is 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial. That's what the formula says. So, R is just the so we're going to basically, the 8 is the number yeah. you start with. And the 3 is your spaces or your decisions, right? Now, mathematically, we need to know how to do the algebra with exclamation marks without a calculator. So how do you figure out that this, 8 factorial over 5 factorial, is the same as this, which is 336? 8 times 7 is 56. 56 times 6 is 336. Well, when simplifying with factorials, the idea is you look for the biggest one. Obviously, 8 is bigger than 5. And so you start writing out the definition of factorial. Well, a factorial means you multiply all the way down to 1. So I would have 8 times 7 times 6. And when I get to the number on the bottom, I might just keep the exclamation mark there because I'd be like, hey, wait a minute. If I have the same thing on the top and the bottom, that can't be one. And then we get to 8 times 7 times 6, the same as we did with our spaces. Now, the reason we don't use the formula very much is because the spaces are so easy to use. So you'll probably choose to do that first. However, sometimes it's going to be easier to be like, oh, I have too big of numbers, like in the Boston Marathon. There's how many people that run in the Boston Marathon? More than 10, right? I think. So it's like even more than 12. Even more than 12. So when you get to numbers that's like bigger than 12, that's a lot. So there's a lot of people running in the Boston Marathon. And let's say they give cash prizes to the top 30 or something like that. And there's 100 people running. 100 P30 is a lot easier to write than it would be to write 30 spaces and go 199, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, all the way down. There is the P button on your calculator as well. So if you have a graphing calculator, I don't even know, this might be too big for, let's see if this is still, the numbers are too big for the calculator. Hit math, go over to probability, and number two is NPR, so you go 100, P30, it is a huge number. Doesn't look big, right? First you think, oh, 7.79 isn't very big. But it has this e to the 57, which is scientific notation for times 10 to the 57. There are 57 digits after the 7. You know how to say that number? I have this little, this very faded green piece of paper I got in grade 6. 
and it describes how to say big numbers. So like, for example, if you have three zeros, that's a thousand. Did you know that one? And then six zeros is a million. But if you had 57 zeros like this one, this number is actually 7.79 octodecillions. And I've always wanted to be an octodecillionaire, but I'm working on it. It's like a lot of money I have to work on getting. I'm on my way. I'm in the thousands. But working on getting up to those 57 zeros on my bank account. It goes up to 63 if you want to become a vigintillionaire. 63, right? 60 would be a novem decillionaire. Very, you know, when you meet one of those, you know they've done something amazing. Or they just moved to a country where inflation was so bad that the money is worth nothing. That could all, that, that might be my, my strategy in life. Late in life, I just moved to a country where the economy is so bad that their money is worthless. Zimbabwe did that last time. Zimbabwe did that last There are some crazy places out there. Oh, yeah, Venezuela. But they don't use American money. They don't use their own money. They don't use their own money because it's not worth anything. 